Hi, I'm here at the National Gas Museum that contains the biggest collection of gas artifacts in the world. Today, I'm going to show you how ancestors used gas to light and warm their lives up. So let me tell you the history of the site and how the museum opened. So in 1878, this used to be the gas works. This room was the office, upstairs was the recreational room, and over there was loads of yards which hosted quite a lot of these, a retort. Now, how did it all start? The guy up there, William Murdoch, in 1792, he built a retort, which is a closed vessel, in his shed in Redruth in Cornwall, he then piped it up to his cottage and created lighting and that's how it all started. Should we see around the yes, museum let me and show you around. know the opinion of who's visiting? Okay. So it's kind of cold in here and I find these are from 1978. 1978. How would these work? Okay. They're made of black cast iron and the fires are made to last. So, you have a connection at the side here. Oh, really? That would go into the inlet of the wall. Then you would turn it on, get a match, light it, and then it would go whoosh. Like, like that? that? Yeah. Okay. So who would own one of these? Um, this one came out of a mansion in Doncaster. Okay. And this one was generally used in a doctor's surgery or a dentist. And what East Midlands Gas Board used to do is donate a fire like this so people would get used to using gas. Oh, really? Oh, that was really cool. Thank you very much. So, can you tell me a bit about how people did their ironing with gas? Of course. Here you see a different variety of gas irons. You can see the ones that have got the connection as opposed to this one and the one at the end. This is a three-way iron or often known as a flat iron so you would put this one on your hob and it would heat up the three irons so the housewife would pick the first one up she'd generally spit on it to see how hot it was and then iron away this type of iron is generally used for men's top hats so to iron the top hat or you could use it on your shirts when you're getting all the creases there and iron the creases on the shirts. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have gas lights and there's three and the gas lights are lit by mantles and it gets really hot and people used to keep warm by the gas lights many years ago. So in the kitchen we have a hot water circulator, cost five pounds, nine shillings and sixpence in 1922. And this was to heat the whole of the house. You'd have a tank upstairs that would heat the water. This is a hairdryer that mainly belongs in the house. Uh, so people would dry the hair. The beauty of the hairdryer is that certain fumes come up as you're having your hair dried. So Janet, these cookers look relatively modern. How do they compare to, say, the Hercules cooker from 1985? Okay, the, the ones over the Hercules, the ones that mm. you were talking about, yeah. are made of black cast iron made to last. No bottom on the floor, uh, whereas you've got the correct ovens on these. Uh, no high level grills, no uh, plate rack as well. So this type, if you bought this type of cooker in the showroom, then you're always given a cookery book and a meat roasting dish as well. So if someone bought a cooker from the showroom and say they baked a Victoria sandwich cake and it didn't rise, we used to have a team of girls that would come round called home service girls. They used to go out and give cookery demonstrations to colleges and societies. So they would go to the customer's house, they would bake a Victoria sandwich cake. If the cake rose, then it was the customer that couldn't bake. If it didn't rise, 
then they would change the cooker for you straight uh -huh. away. And also they would change the dials if you slightly disabled and you couldn't turn them, uh, okay. they would come and do that. So we've heard a lot about how gas is used, but how is it distributed? Here you can see a variety of metres. So we start with the oldest metres here, and as you go along, they become more modern, and we've even got the smart meter. So years ago, when women didn't work and they would stay at home, the men gave the women housekeeping money, and often the women didn't know how much the men earned. So what the women used to do is get the meter reader to turn the meter higher so it looked as though they were using more gas. And so when the meter reader came round and emptied the meter, then they would get the rebate. So it was always a way, always a way. Smart. And these types of meters, if you bought something in the showroom and you couldn't afford it, you could actually, say you bought a cooker, you could actually put the price of the cooker on your meter and pay for it through the meter. Oh, wow. Thanks for coming along to our whistle stop tour of the National Gas Museum. We hope you found it interesting and there's plenty more to see, including a supposedly haunted library upstairs. If you'd like to come and give us a visit, we're located on 195 Aylstone Road, which is pretty hard to miss with the 30 metre tall clock tower outside. Entry is free of charge and we're open Tuesday till Thursday, 10am till 3pm. It was ample of parking to the rear of the building and there was disabled access on the ground floor.